at that, let's get started. Uh, for anybody that is totally new to wholesale, that are new or prospective customers but haven't uh, really engaged with it before, um, I just want to give a very brief overview here. Wholesale is a, a serialized e-commerce inventory software, um, and it's built specifically for folks that are buying and selling used electronics and really specifically used phones. So um, my co-founder and I have a, a history in the used phone industry. We've had a lot of these problems before of experiencing bad software or, or perhaps maybe just inventory software that was not designed from the ground up to track serialization um, and the IMEIs, the devices that you're selling, and the fact that used devices are so different from new products. When you're tracking uh, an inventory of used devices, they can have so many different conditions, so many different SKUs, and that, that creates obviously a million SKUs in uh, most uh, traditional and conventional inventory apps. Uh, and so we built Wholesale as a, as a solution to those problems. So, um, you know, Wholesale addresses these things like just the core of serialized inventory management, where every item in your inventory has its own history, has its own unique page, um, and all of these details that you can track about it, like its condition, the various conditions it could have, its grade, um, the, the IMEI of the device, the serial number of the device, any custom information you want to track about it, the battery health, for example. Um, those things are really unique to, to this uh, kind of world of products that we all work in. And so Wholesale is built for that. Um, you can scan IMEIs in Wholesale. You can audit them on your orders, your purchase orders um, in, in batches when you send them off for repair or you repair them internally. Um, and so that's, that's a, Wholesale has a whole suite of tools internally for managing your serialized inventory that can be pretty powerful at scale. Um, we also have a handful of e-commerce integrations and business integrations that connect Wholesale to other pieces of software, um, several of which are, are really industry specific. Um, so those pieces of software and e-commerce marketplaces. So you can kind of maintain the places that your inventory, you sell your inventory on through Wholesale uh, and keep your listings live and accurate. So that's kind of wholesale in uh, in short. So I mentioned these e-commerce integrations that we have. Uh, we have a handful of them. We've got a Swappa integration, an eBay integration, and a back market integration. And these are direct integrations that we at Wholesale have built to connect Wholesale to these marketplaces to kind of sync your, your, um, your stock quantities and your stock levels so that you can sell on all the marketplaces at once. And if you have a sale on one marketplace, that sale comes into Wholesale and, you, and Wholesale updates your other marketplaces um, to, to reflect that you know, sale has happened and your quantity has come down. So that all happens automatically once you connect wholesale to the various marketplaces you sell on. So we have those three integrations that are direct. We know that uh, folks are selling on a lot more than just those three marketplaces. So we're actively building at the bottom. You can see we've, uh, we've got Amazon, Walmart, and Shopify integrations coming soon. They just take a while to, uh, to, to really do well. And we don't, we try not to release stuff that isn't, uh, isn't well baked, especially when it connects to other systems. You'll notice we get things out pretty quickly when they're they're just kind of in the wholesale ecosystem but when they connect to other systems it certainly takes a, uh, a bit longer to to verify with those other systems to go through their approval processes and stuff like that and we try to do things the right way from the start so um so we've got more marketplace direct connections coming out soon um, but we also have these two connections there that you see that are with Cellbrite, which is a multi-channel connector that that has uh, integrations with a lot of uh, different marketplaces and we have this uh, the second bullet there that's our ship station order import integration and our stock levels api so we recently released our our api i'll be talking about that in just a second here um, but this combination of importing your orders through ShipStation is pretty neat. So you can, you know, any uh, ShipStation has many, many, many different uh, marketplaces that it connects to. That's its whole thing is, is connecting to these marketplaces to bring in orders for shipment. And so Wholesale has an integration with ShipStation where, whereby Wholesale can bring over any orders that you get into your ShipStation account uh, because you get them into ShipStation and then Wholesale can bring them over from ShipStation. And that covers the order importing part of the, the puzzle. But one of the pieces of this that's, that's always been difficult is, well, sure, you're, or, you're importing orders, but are you maintaining your stock levels on the various marketplaces that are coming through ShipStation? Since Wholesale's not connecting directly to those marketplaces, 
how do you keep your your stock levels every one of the listings that you have on those marketplaces up to date with the accurate quantities if something sells on one marketplace you obviously want to update another um, and you want to do that automatically well in the past we've we've had folks that are, are doing this manually in some form or another they're just using shipstation to get the orders from you know amazon walmart shopify and others woocommerce perhaps um into wholesale because we don't have direct integrations with those channels yet. Uh, but we released our stock levels API, which allows you to, to actually get a full stock levels report. You can request it as a CSV, or you can request it as a, a JSON payload, which is, which is how most uh, modern REST APIs work. Um, and so you could either have developers connect our, our API endpoint to your channels um, and build, build your own kind of integration for that, or you could be having someone pull the CSV as frequently as you want, and that gives you all the stock levels. And most of these channels have a place for you to upload all of your different SKUs and the current stock levels available. So this is kind of a, a solution to connect to any marketplaces that wholesale doesn't have a direct integration with yet. And it's you know fully a full circle integration that connects both the, the order importing side when an orders come in um, and the, uh, the listing quantity side that, that keeps all of your channels up to date with the correct listing quantities so you don't oversell. All of this is to avoid overselling. Um, so we're constantly trying to attack that problem at the, at the core. So those are wholesale's e-commerce integrations. We have a, a couple of business integrations that I really like. Uh, we connect to PhoneCheck, which is kind of becoming the premier diagnostic testing software for devices in, uh, in the United States and abroad. Um, and so you can bring over all of your inventory data from PhoneCheck. You, you have testers plugging in devices into PhoneCheck and running through tests on them get, and putting the grade information uh, getting all of the pass and fail test information into phone check, you can very easily import that information over to wholesale um, and, and get that data into wholesale as inventory. Um, and so that's kind of the missing link is connecting phone check. Now phone check is, is working with lots of marketplaces to put badges uh, on your listings on those marketplaces to, to show that the phones have been tested with phone check, which we think is really cool and, and uh, a great feature um, because that adds value to your listings. Um, but then managing the, the quantities of the listings and managing kind of this e-commerce chaos that can really arise that is what wholesale does well in the middle so you bring stuff all that inventory information from phone check into wholesale and then wholesale manages all of the different places you're selling which we're going to be talking about today with the, the b2b uh, sales portal so we've got a phone check integration we have a quickbooks integration that's just for syncing uh, invoices and purchase orders and that just allows you to not have to double enter your information into quickbooks uh, we have our ship station integration that's for shipping so you can uh, export orders any orders that are in wholesale can go over to ship station for shipping purposes when you print a label over in ship station or create a label and then print it the tracking information comes back to wholesale and wholesale can send it to uh, your e-commerce channels so really a you know a full service, full cycle uh, integration pool for the stuff that gets your inventory information into wholesale and from wholesale, sending it to the sales channels that you do business with. So those are our business integrations. As I mentioned, we recently released our API in the last couple of months and people are using it for all kinds of cool stuff. Um, so, you know, we, we, we've got a handful of different endpoints on our API that allow you to access different information within wholesale. And for current customers on the call, you know, we're getting constant uh, requests to add more different endpoints and different information to our existing endpoints. Uh, and we're keeping track of all those. We've got a big list of the different things that people want to access. So we've been thrilled to see how much our, our APIs are getting used, um, or our API, excuse me, and our endpoints are, are being uh, accessed. And um, just really excited about you know the fact that now We've, we've seen in the industry, a lot of people have built their own custom software to, to track this, the, their inventory because everybody's had this problem where um, traditional inventory solutions maybe aren't quite a fit. Uh, and so what we like is every, everybody has their own solution or they've got some kind of combination of, of multiple solutions, but everybody does things a little bit different from each other. And so what we like is with our API, folks can use wholesale and all the tools we've spent years building and thinking about in wholesale uh, at its core, 
but then you can build your own custom tools on top of wholesale uh, using our API. So I have some examples of those here. You know, the folks that are building uh, buyback or trade-in software, or they've got their own buyback or trade-in portal for customers to use. Now you can connect that to create purchase orders, create incoming inventory, and make it really simple to, to track those things coming in. If you've got custom warehouse or reporting tools that are, you know, looking at maybe, maybe you're, you're, you've got scanners in the warehouse that are scanning, people that are scanning uh, devices in bulk, and they don't have a computer in front of them. Well, you could build a mobile app or some other kind of application to, to address that, um, whatever use case you have there. Uh, and then e-commerce connections, which I just addressed in the, the e-commerce slide um, about using our stock levels API to connect any kind of custom e-commerce uh, website or sales portal that you have. Uh, to wholesale to, to display your current inventory for sale and bring in either offers or, or orders from your customers. So wholesale's API, really excited to have that out. And you know, for anybody that's new on the call and is wondering how do you connect you know, the, the custom things that you do into wholesale, that is, that is how you'll do it, uh, is through our API and we'll, we'll certainly help you um, figure out you know, what, what can and can't be connected and, and how that should work. So. On to the fun stuff uh, and the, the point of today's webinar is, uh, is the B2B customer portal. So yeah, I think some of you that are on the call have, have already had beta access to our customer portal. It hasn't changed dramatically from when you've had beta access, but we've tested a lot of things, um, solved uh, and, and resolved bugs that we found, um, and now it's available to all wholesale customers. And I think it's a particularly unique thing that you know the B2B portal is essentially an e-commerce website that's that's focused on B2B. So it's kind of like having your own Shopify site. But of course, you know, Shopify is much more feature rich. They have a lot of things, they have a whole history of building interesting features. But I haven't seen a great solution to listing B2B stuff in bulk. And that's what we're going to be targeting with the B2B customer portal is a place for people that are selling in bulk to certain customers. And most even e-commerce uh, resellers that we see have some customers who come in and make them an offer and buy stuff in bulk. And it's a great way to have this kind of dual service of your business where, you know, you're usually selling things at higher margin on e-commerce and you've got that e-commerce workflow set up, but you want some way to be able to show what you have in stock because sometimes you have hundreds of different things, uh, different items in stock. And you want to be able to have just an easy place for your B2B customers to come in, see your inventory, say that they want to buy some of it um, and then potentially see their order history, see their the history of IMEIs that they bought from you, see their RMA history, et cetera. Um, and the IMEI history is one that I just really like. So, you know, we, we hear frequently that um, customers that sell B2B, customers of wholesale that are selling to their customers, they're selling phones in bulk, um, B2B, their customers are constantly trying to return items that they didn't get from you. So, you know, if, if I'm a bulk reseller, I'm selling uh, this stuff in bulk, these, these phones in bulk, um, my customers are, are trying to send back IMEIs that they didn't buy from me. And that's incredibly frustrating and, and difficult, to, uh, difficult to mitigate because, you know, you really always have to be checking which devices did I sell to this customer, which IMEIs did I send out. If you're not using wholesale, that can be a huge nightmare because you're, you're looking at all these spreadsheets of the different IMEIs that, that were attributed to, to every order going out. And this just kind of flips the, the model and allows your customers to have access to a global IMEI list of the devices that they've always, that they purchased from you. So it gives them a way and you could, you know, you could put this in your, your uh, requirement for any RMAs that you're processing from your, your bulk customers, that they go in and search their IMEI purchase history in the, the customer portal. So you give them access to, to this customer portal. They could go search the IMEI history, see whether or not they're trying to return a device that, uh, that you sent to them. Uh, maybe they bought it from another vendor. And, and that just kind of you know, kicks out one of those problems that, that I think anybody selling in bulk has at least seen once uh, or, or once or twice. Um, so that's the, the B2B uh, customer portal. It's an e-commerce portal that is very, very easily uh, generated off of your existing wholesale account. And that's kind of our ethos here is we're trying to build tools that sit on top of this inventory management system. So you, all you have to do is continue managing your inventory and these tools just they, they act automatically. And I didn't really add that as a, as a bullet point here, but I probably will add it in the future that you know it's, it's pretty neat that all you have to do is keep adding inventory to wholesale and you'll have sales continuing to come in. The B2B customer portal, the for sale page that shows your current available stock um, in this portal 
that stays live with all the inventory that you have um, as you're adding inventory and, and selling off inventory. And that's its whole idea is it's kind of a passive way to list this, this stuff my and apologies. it never goes. Oh, my watch uh, just went off. Um, but it, it always stays active and it never it never goes stale as long as you're managing your inventory in, in wholesale. So that is the, the portal. Um, I'm going to kind of jump over to another one of my uh, browser windows here to just walk through different aspects of the portal and show you guys how it works. Uh, I've got the chat open as well. So if you've got any questions as we're going through, just let me know. Um, so here I am at my, hopefully everyone can see, I'm at my, my wholesale account looking at my inventory page. Now, if I've got the B2B customer portal, uh, or if I want to go in and set up the customer portal, I'm going to go to my settings page. And then I'm going to scroll down to customer portal. And here I can see all the settings I have for the customer portal. And I'm just going to walk through them with you. So I've got the URL that I can visit my customer portal at. I think that before this, there's an enable button. So we've got to just hit enable the customer portal. And, and then, it, uh, then, then we get to this page. So if you've just started your wholesale account and haven't turned this on yet, that's what you'll see. But you'll enable it and you'll see these settings. We can uh, open up the, the customer portal here. Let's open that in a new tab. Um, so that's, you can see, and that's, that's the name of my business, acme.wholesale.io slash customer portal. And, you know, we, we haven't set up any kind of custom domain routing yet, but this is something that you could set up as well. You could have a link on your existing website to your customer portal and, and, and that, you know, it can't get more simple than that. Or you could, you could, uh, redirect or route your, uh, custom domain on your site to this so that, you know, customers just see, um, portal dot acme.com or whatever um, and so that that should be an easy thing for for you to set up on your end um, we can just enable the customer portal here very easy to disable if we just uh, want to bring it down for any reason for maintenance or anything like that and the first thing that you see here is inventory statuses and so anyone that's that's uh, used our existing e-commerce integrations most of this stuff is going to look very familiar and the idea is that wholesale gives you the capability to scope which what inventory you want to show on the for sale page and what inventory you want to connect to your e-commerce channel. So we give you, you know, you have the complete control over the statuses of your inventory. You can create, manage these statuses and they should basically, um, they should mimic what, what kind of pipeline you have in your warehouse. So if you've got a specific receiving pipeline, everyone has a different one for testing, grading, and processing inventory, maybe repairing inventory, and then making inventory available for sale. You can, you can kind of define that process with these statuses. And then you can choose from these statuses for whichever integration that you're connecting. And in this case, we're, we're just talking about what inventory we're showing on our B2B portal. So I just have available selected here. I'm just showing inventory that's in this available status, um, which you know prevents prevents my customers from asking me about the repair stock that I've got that I'm, is actually in repair right now. Maybe not repair stock, but is repair items that are inventory in my warehouse being repaired because that's what that status would, would signify. So anyways. That's, that's how we scope our inventory to these statuses. We've got warehouses. So uh, in wholesale, you can have multiple warehouses. I'm selecting here to, to uh, show inventory from either warehouse. And then we have these interesting ones, order status and channel. And this is when orders come in from the customer portal, when our customers are making orders and placing an order in the portal, what status does the order show up in and what channel does the order show up as being from? And for the sake of these, I've gone in and created in my settings, new statuses uh, for the B2B portal review, because realistically, when a customer makes a, an order uh, for Acme, at least from, from Acme, uh, we need to review that order and make sure that the, the customer placed it um, with the right, you know, if, if we set the right prices, we need to make sure that everything looks accurate and that we're going to be able to fulfill the order. So I created a status called B2B portal review, and then I can go into my orders later and just review all the orders that have come in today from that status. Uh, and then I've also created a channel for B2B customer portal. And the channel is, you know, it doesn't say this here, but it's really a way that we separate orders and wholesale for you to be able to, to look at your analytics, your financials across these orders. So you could compare your financials on orders from the B2B customer portal with your orders that you're getting on eBay or your orders that you're getting on back market or what have you, and just see kind of the gross financials. How much are you making on phones on average um, that you sell through, through these different channels? Uh, I can upload my logo. 
I can automatically generate an invoice that gets emailed to the customer when they uh, place an order through the, through the channel, uh, through B2B customer portal. And so that'll auto invoice them for the order. You can do that if you're, you know, if you feel confident that you're, um, Basically, that that you feel confident that the order that is being generated is going to be fulfilled, so you don't need to review it, um, and and you want to generate that invoice so they get it. And that invoice, to be clear, will have payment instructions on whatever payment method the customer chooses when they check out. And this will be a little bit more uh, kind of easier to understand as I go through a checkout on the customer portal. But you you've got these options, so you can you can choose whether to send them an automatic invoice or not. And you can choose what payment methods. Obviously, we've got a lot of test stuff in this uh, demo account that we have. But um, you can choose what payment methods you want to offer to them to be able to choose from. So we're going to give our customers this ability to check out, basically creating a draft order. And we have these options for how we want that order to be set up um, and, and what options we want to give the customer. Our last bit is something that we've added here since the beta, um, which is as we were doing the beta, we realized there's inventory that you might not have set a list price for because folks, some folks that are, maybe if you're just selling uh, mostly e-commerce, you haven't gone in and set wholesale's list price for this, uh, the inventory that you have in your account because you're mostly managing the list price on the listings that you have on your e-commerce channels. So you have this option to hide inventory that doesn't have prices because obviously if it doesn't have a price, it's going to show up without a price in the portal. You don't necessarily, maybe you want customers to see that, maybe you don't. So we allow you to hide the inventory that, uh, that doesn't have a price. Um, so these are the settings, pretty straightforward and basic in, in the portal. Um, I've got all of those set up. Let's pop over to that, um, that page that I had opened. Actually, you know what? I want to show you guys one last thing, which is how do you, so, so this is the customer portal, but when we go to the portal, if we're not signed in, I think on this link, I was already signed in. Let me sign out really quickly and let's just exit this guy and pop this open again. So this is my portal URL for this demo account. So when your customers come to this page, they're gonna see the, the Acme wireless logo, the name Acme, and a login page. They're gonna just be sitting at a login page. None of this stuff is public. We've put it behind a login so that you can manage who has access to this. And it kind of is nice. It feels like people are being invited to an exclusive login under your branding, right? That's why we did it this way, um, so that you can have that advertised only to the customers you choose. And so a critical part of, of setting up your customer portal is inviting the customers that you, you want to have access to the portal. And so that's not really covered here in the settings, that's covered under organizations, which are your vendors and your customers. So we've got vendor and customer here. Um, let's find one of, let's, let's just see if we've got anybody in here named Ryan. Ryan Husted, okay. so. Say we want to, we've got this customer, Ryan, we've got one order going to them. So they're not a big customer, but we want to give them access. So now we have this option under the, the user profile of our customer, uh, customer portal accounts. So we can go to customer portal account. We can add a customer portal account and we put in the name and the email. And then Ryan would get an invite to come and set his password and join the customer portal. So this is what, you know, we've had to build out user management for, for folks that are um, gonna be managing these, these different customer access logins. Um, and so this is where you do it. It's under the organization's page and the profile for your customers. So we're adding more features there. And so you can add, you know, if, if this organization, if it wasn't just Ryan, but it was Ryan and co, uh, then you could add multiple user accounts. If somebody's got multiple emails, they want to be able to log in from, from different logins, or they have, you know, realistically what it is is they have multiple purchasers at their organization. You can give those purchasers all various access so that they can come in and see um, their account with you. But it's, but it's not going to be separate accounts. Each organization has its own account with its own history of, of orders and access to the for sale page and so forth. So uh, if anybody's got any questions about that, of course, uh, feel free to put them in the chat, but that's how it works. So let's pop back. We've, we've invited, um, I've invited myself to my customer portal. So I have a login here that's saved in my password manager, uh, Brennan.Zellner. And so we're gonna sign in to the customer portal here. And bang, here we are. So it immediately brings us to our serialized item history. And I can just see the different items that I've purchased in the past. Um, a lot of these don't have ESNs, they're in our test account and we, we haven't uploaded ESNs for them, but you can see just kind of this clarity of, okay, I bought this item, I bought it on this order, it's got this ESN, if it had any damage conditions, those would be here. I bought it for $9 and I bought it on this date and I can search for the different items. And so like I was saying, you know, if your customers are, if they're, if you've got 
problematic customers that are returning devices frequently that they didn't buy from you. They're sending you some other vendor's device. You could just require them now, give them a login and require them to come to this item history page and search for the item that they're trying to return, make sure that they bought it. Um, so we have these, these you know, various histories. We've got item history, we have an order history that shows our previous orders. We have an RMA history that shows the previous RMAs and the current status of those RMAs. So you can use status, you know, you could use it to, to mark whether something's approved or not. So you could have status under needs approval um, when, you, when you've got an RMA that came from a customer that go to someone for approval and then um, it can be approved and the customer can get a, a shipping label to send the RMA back. You have control over those processes. We haven't um, dug into that too much, but we've got a status column just to give you that ability. You can quickly see how much inventory is on the RMA, um, the refund amount, uh, and the date. So just a quick comparison and, and preview of, of the RMAs that are in the account. And then the real money maker is the for sale page. So like I was saying earlier, what's unique about this for sale page compared to any other you know, e-commerce listing site and the reason that that wholesale would want to build uh, an e-commerce portal for you is because you're already managing your inventory inside of wholesale. So your teams are adding inventory and receiving it when you get new purchase orders from your vendors and they're processing sales. The I whole idea of this customer portal is to have it be passively connected and automatically connected to your available inventory, to whatever settings you chose in your, in your settings and your uh, customer portal settings here. Whatever settings you chose here to scope your inventory, that's what's being shown as available to customers. And to just have that be kind of out of sight, out of mind, automatic is a really, really wonderful thing, right? It, it takes a huge component off of your salespeople's uh, table of trying to constantly set up new Google Sheets or however you're advertising your stock, put together MailChimp campaigns. They still will want to make email campaigns and stuff like that, but they can point your existing customers towards towards this inventory um, that's that's listed in the, the customer portal. So we can see this is a test uh, account customer portal. We don't have very much inventory for sale. We've got some test items, um, but we, we do have some in various quantities. So let's go ahead. Thankfully, all of it, uh, aside from the AirPods, uh, are priced. Um, so we've got these iPhone 8s on T-Mobile. They're A grade. They don't have any bad, uh, any damage conditions, nothing, nothing wrong with them. So let's add 10 of them to our cart. And I'll, I'll point out as well that this site looks really good on mobile. So if your customers are accessing it from mobile, we've designed the site. Hopefully you can still see my screen there. I've kind of uh, really uh, tightened it up um, to be in a, a mobile uh, browse view. And so if I'm a customer browsing on mobile, I've got this mobile menu. Um, I've still got that Acme wireless brand, the logo branding there. Um, but I can browse and, and add stuff to the cart. I can check it out. I can look at my cart. And here's all the details of, uh, so I've added 10 of those iPhone eights that are 140 bucks. It's 1400 bucks. Let's pop this window a little bit wider again. And, um, and then if I wanted to, I could go back to the for sale page. I could add more. Let's add a couple of these iPhone sevens. Let's add two of them at hundred bucks. And so I, and I also kind of get this live view of what's in my cart. And so let's go to the cart. We've got a $1,600 cart. Let's check out and just so everyone knows, you know, I don't want to hide behind it. I just noticed a bug here today where our total is zero. So we're going to fix that bug ASAP. Um, but uh, I know that the total on the next page is, is correct. And the subtotal here is correct as well. And we don't really have any, uh, any line items that we're adding to this order. So the, the subtotal is going to be the final total for now anyways. So um, the customer, if I, I'm a customer and I'm, I'm making this, uh, this kind of order request, um, so I can choose what, what kind of payment method I want to pay with. I'm going to pay with a wire transfer. My name is Brennan. And let's say I'm with wholesale. I'm going to put in my home address here. And I'll put in my phone number. And my personal email address. So, okay, I'm, I'm a customer of, uh, of this, of Acme Wireless put in all this information, I'm gonna confirm my order. And uh, we get an order placed successfully, thanks for your request. We'll confirm your order and send an invoice shortly. And so we've got that, you know, kind of that follow-up information. We have this, uh, the verification of the shipping address and, and this went through. So, so from the customer's perspective, this order went through. Let's pop back into wholesale really quick and go to, I'm gonna make my page a little wider. Let's go to sales orders. 
and see that order that just came through for those, uh, I think, 12 items that we ordered. So, okay, so we've got an order here. It's from the B2B customer portal. It's from me, Brennan Zellner, because I've signed in. I already have an account. I've signed in uh, at my, um, my existing account. It's for 12 items. Obviously, no items are committed yet. We haven't gone through and committed that order, but we've got a $1,600 order, um, order total, and the status is in B2B portal review. So like I was saying, you could come in here and you could um, very, very simply filter for the B2B customer, for orders that need to be reviewed, basically, um, based on their status, and, and quickly see, okay, there's one in this B2B uh, portal review, and I can review it and then follow up with my customer and and make sure that the details are squared away. So let's look at that order. We've pulled it up. We've got the address that I had entered uh, in the customer portal. We've got these two items that are, um, you know, that, that I placed orders for, these two iPhone 7s with cracked screens, the 10 iPhone 8s, the totals are, are here. And so we've got an order. Uh, I had set these, uh, the status and the channel not to ship to ShipStation, or not to, excuse me, not to sync with ShipStation, because these are, these are status orders that we want to review right now. So I could set that, uh, the channel um, to, to sync with ShipStation, but I just set the, the status to not sync with ShipStation. So this order will not sync with ShipStation because it's not ready yet. We don't know if we're, we're going to do this, uh, do this deal with this customer, but provided that we, we want to, we can go in and we could commit inventory that, that matches these, these devices that the customer has ordered. We could send them an invoice, they'll pay for it. And, uh, and we'll ship those items off to the customer. And most importantly, if we go back to the portal now, let's go back to that for sale page. If I'm any customer now coming to this for sale page, I'm, I'm currently logged in as me, but I'm uh, uh, the same customer. But we can see that those, those items that we had purchased have now come down in quantity. Their quantities have been updated to reflect the current quantities now that I've placed an order. So in, in my status settings, for this order, for this B2B portal review, I am making it, it's called open order status settings. I've set it so that these quantities, they count against my available quantity. So, so our B2B portal is taking that into account. It's subtracting those avail those quantities that are outstanding on this order so that another customer that comes in and looks at this page, they're not going to see those quantities um, and they're not going to, you know, place an order that would effectively make me oversell um, across these various different B2B uh, portal customers. So, and these, if these were listed on an e-commerce channel, if I had these listed in stock listings on Swappa or on back market or eBay, or if I had my API uh, connected for the stock levels endpoint connected to, uh, to some um, custom e-commerce site, these values would just be uh, brought down by the order that I just placed through the, the for sale checkout on the customer portal. So long-winded, I wanted to give a, a full walkthrough of, of what the customer portal does um, and how it, you know, how it adds value to, to businesses that are, that are selling in bulk to their customers and what the experience would look like for, for your customers when they, they sign in. So they'll see your logo, they'll see this branded page that looks good on desktop, uh, on, a, on an iPad or on, on mobile, on, on an Android or, or iPhone uh, device. And so this gives you a you know good hopefully professional looking branding um, at no extra charge above your your wholesale subscription fee. So this is a, a portal for you to use. Um, there are a handful of things that we want to add to this portal, and we're getting great feedback from our customers. We eventually want to add the ability to to make offers for for your customers. We know you know in the e-commerce relationship, people sometimes they're making offers, but but often they're buying it at the price that you've set and you're managing that price to, to win a buy box or something like that. So, so that pricing is all done. Um, is kind of done by you, but in the, the B2B world, we know that, that there's often a offer back and forth that the customers are offering you're negotiating. And so we'd like to add the ability to, to have, uh, um, to have offers here. Um, we'd like the ability to have instant checkouts with, with various payment methods and providers. And so, the, this is just this is just v1 of this portal um, but we're really excited about what it does like I was saying for that automatic listing of your available inventory and the histories the order history item history and RMA history um, for your customers to be able to log in and see that not just make requests ask you for this stuff over email uh, but to see that and uh, be able to follow up so I'm gonna pop back over here to my q a slide if anybody's got any questions, please feel free to uh, to put them in the chat. I've got the chat pulled up here. Um, 
But if there are no questions, you know, um, what I'll talk about a little bit is our, our trial program. If you come and join us on a webinar here, we are more than happy to um, add additional time to your trial if you end up needing it. Um, if you haven't started a trial yet and you want to start one, we'll, we'll give you a little bit of bonus time from the get-go. Um, and Justin just said, will there be a section for condition description for customers in the B2B portal? Um, Justin, do you mean the, the condition description like the something different than the grade and the damage conditions you'd want like a custom uh condition description great i believe that we're showing grade let's pop back over in the customer portal so yes on the for sale page we do have a um oh oh, oh i see you're saying for um kind of a grade description. What is A, what is B? Uh, yeah, that's an interesting suggestion. I think that we'll add that to our, our roadmap and, and stick it in um, the kind of the updates here for the customer portal. I think the way that we're envisioning this now is if you put the customer portal as a link on your website for customers to come and access, um, then then you probably already have a website. We're, we're not really intending the customer portal to be the brand and face of your website that would be viewable to all customers, at least not yet. And so I think our thinking is um, you, you would have that kind of description of your various grades that you're advertising to customers on your existing site with pictures of, of examples of, of different grades, devices that you've graded in, in the various grading categories. And then your customers would access this and be able to see. But I, I love that idea. It'd be really neat if you could you know click on A grade and see what does A grade mean to, to Acme Wireless. And so I think that's an interesting idea. We'll certainly add it to the list. Um, Evan said, is there a way to have separate inventories displayed to different clients? Not right now, Evan. That's an interesting question. Um, the only way to do that would be to use our existing feature um, of public inventory reports. So this is kind of where inventory reports and our B2B customer portal differ is the portal is just showing uh, you know, a specific group. The, the, the nice thing about it is people can search for specific models. Um, and so if somebody's only interested in Apple devices or only interested in Samsung, it's very easy for them to toss that into the search query and find those items. But we do have this feature in our uh, public inventory reports where you can share a link of a, a list, a table of inventory. Um, and and so in that feature, you can filter the what specific people see. Obviously, we can filter what you can create many of them and filter things specifically. I think what is possible in the future is um, we could make it so that you could have multiple customer portals. You could have a repair stock customer portal, a available functional stock customer portal. Um, and that's probably the way that we'd approach it. It's not possible right now, but I, but it, um, that's, I think, the way things are built and, and might make sense to have in the future. If you don't mind me asking, Evan, um, how, how, uh, what's like the main categories that you'd want to separate your customers by? Um, is it repair stock versus functional stock or are there different, um, are there other differentiators of the inventory that you want to filter for different clients? Mostly the grade and value. So, okay, so you guys have some interesting. So you've got some customers obviously looking for, they only want A grade. Other customers are willing to take B, C, D, whatever other grades you've got. Um, and then some customers are coming in for high-end iPhone 12s, 13s, et cetera. And then there are other customers that are looking specifically for the lower end devices, for cheaper devices. They're looking for um, the discount, the the bargain, uh, the, the A models, the Samsung A models, the Android um devices that are cheaper interesting i i really like that um yeah i think that the way that we would probably approach that is by giving you you know a kind of a different customer portal and then you could invite customers to access to the different customer portals and, and just like you have multiple inventory reports that you can generate right now with different filters we'd we'd probably employ it that way so that you could you could set things up i think that's really interesting we'll we'll add that to the list as well so yeah thanks great questions um, I, I think we've gotten a number of questions before as well when I, I did the beta demos of do we have any, you know, I, I think I addressed this, but do we have any kind of pricing model for the B2B portal? You get charged by Shopify and other platforms, a percentage on every order. The short answer is no. We do not have any kind of uh, fee structure right now for uh, wholesale charging you. It's not to say that we'll never do it, but we have no plans to do it at the moment. Our whole goal here is to add a 
an e-commerce channel that is completely automated for you by what you are adding to wholesale. So you don't have to, you don't have to have somebody creating and managing listings. The listings are automatically generated by the inventory you're, you're putting into the software. And we just want to see uh, people use this and hope that it, uh, you know, allows them to simplify this, this big chunk of, of the sales process that takes up a lot of time. Um, so yeah, totally free. It comes with every wholesale subscription from a $49 a month uh, subscription to a four, $4.99 subscription. Um, so you will have access to this portal regardless of what size your business is at, which, uh, which we think is pretty neat. I'll pop back over here to our Q and A. Anything else anybody's got? Thanks everybody for joining. We got some new folks, Noam, uh, Catalina. Nice to see you all. Nick says, if we're syncing inventory with another marketplace and it sells there, will that reflect the inventory numbers in the portal? Yeah, great question, Nick. Uh, it will. So the way that that works is um, the, if you're selling on another marketplace, presumably you've got that marketplace set up to import orders into wholesale, whether it's from the uh, direct integration like we have with Swappa, Backmarket, and eBay, or it's coming through ShipStation or Sellbrite. So that order, you know, say, let's say you have 10 iPhone 11s and they're listed up on eBay. You get an order for two of them through eBay. As long as you're importing orders from eBay into wholesale, that order for two uh, iPhone 11s is gonna come into to wholesale from eBay. And once it's in wholesale, it's gonna count against the available quantity. So there's gonna be, you know, you've got 10 that were available and, and that are still the inventory items, there's still 10 that are available, but you have an outstanding order that is sitting there that has two. And so all of wholesale's integrations, including the, the uh, B2B customer portal, will pull that to out of the stock uh, that is listed for, for, the, um, for, you know, for the listing that shows up in the B2B customer portal. So those, those two on the eBay order will get subtracted just like they do with any of the other marketplace integrations that we have. All of wholesale's e-commerce uh, marketplace integrations work like this. We take your available quantity, we subtract, any of the quantity that's on outstanding orders that has not been fulfilled yet. And you, you set, you know, what is an outstanding order based on your stat, your order statuses. So various order statuses can be, uh, can affect this or not. Um, and then we have your final quantity and that's what we display in the B2B customer portal. That's what we send to eBay back market Swappa. That's what we show you in your stock levels, API and so forth. So that's the, that's a great question. That's the core of the magic here. Uh, Nick says, great. If someone makes a purchase in the B2B portal, at what point would the inventory numbers get updated? So you have control over that, I should say. And that was part of the, what I was showing with the settings um, for the portal is, uh, and for, you know, you saw in the portal, I had created an order status called B2B portal review or something like that, B2B order review. Anyways, I have the ability to change whether or not that status affects the outstanding quantity. So orders, basically what that means is when an order comes in from the customer portal, like you're saying, you know, customer makes a purchase in the B2B portal. When that portal comes in and, and I had had that order here. So this order right now, because it's in this status, if we go in and I'll just walk through this with you guys, pull this up so I can see any new chats coming in. So this is that order that got created via our B2B customer portal. Let's go to settings in a new tab and sales orders and sales order statuses. So this is that brand new status that I created called B2B portal review, and it is set to open true. So let's look at that status. Order is open. This means select open if you'd like for order items in orders of this status to count towards the outstanding quantity. So in the current settings here, yes. The second that that order gets, and you basically asked when, at what point do the, do the inventory numbers get updated, Nick? The, the, the essence is the second that this order is created because it is in this status and we have the status set up this way, those, these quantities, the 10 of this item and the, the two of this, this item, these SKUs, those are getting subtracted and all the other integrations that I have that are updating Swappa, Backmarket, eBay, are, um, and, and others on Sellbrite or ShipStation, those are being subtracted from the available quantity, the, the, the calculated quantity, which is available minus outstanding. So these are contributing because of the settings 
to that that outstanding and they are being subtracted from my total quantity. So the second that this, this order gets generated, the second someone goes through on the for sale page and completes that checkout, these are currently being set up that way. But you could go into your settings and disable this so that your customers, your B2B customers don't have direct influence over what's listed on your e-commerce channels. You know, you could make this very clear to your B2B customers that this, this ordering portal is just for drafts. It's just draft orders or orders for review. It doesn't mean that they've necessarily placed the order and gotten the inventory. And so you might not want to send them an automatic invoice. You might not want them to think that they're definitely getting these, these items. So, so you could set it up however you want, however makes the most sense for your business. If you're selling on a lot of e-commerce, um, and I guess it kind of depends on how much do you trust your, your B2B customers? Do they usually follow through on their commitments? If they place an order with you, do they pay for it? And do, did they want those phones? If you've got committed customers and they're, they follow through on, on something like this, um, and you're selling e-commerce, then you might want to set it up so that, you know, when someone places an order, the order immediately subtracts from the e-commerce quantities. And the next time wholesale syncs to those e-commerce sites, it updates them with these, these subtracted numbers. Um, so it, it's up to you, I think, but, uh, but you kind of get to work through how do you want that set up in your, in your business and, and what sales channels are you selling on? What, what makes the most sense? Ho hopefully that answered your question, Nick. I, I hope that did. Um, Perfect. Thanks, everybody. Great questions today. I'm really excited to to go through these things. These are things that I like to, you know, I'd even love to have another another wholesale webinar about to talk about just the ways that these stock levels sink. Um, and maybe, you know, maybe for everybody to have a, a visual of this, since it's since we don't have that visual in the customer portal, let me pop into an integration that I have. We'll see if I've got anything listed on eBay that I can show you in our test account. Mm. This is not connected, unfortunately. Okay, yeah, there's no product is connected. Let's just connect this to a specific product variation. So I can show you. Okay, this is probably not the right one, but I'm just gonna connect it anyway so that I can show you how this works. So this is the, the calculation that I've been wanting to show you. Um, that that shows okay this is how many we have in inventory i wish we had some of this item in inventory we don't but this is how much we have in inventory this is how much is sitting on outstanding orders and this is how much is being synced to the channel for this stock stock level um justin said a big sync related webinar would be awesome yeah just we've, we've spent our time putting a lot of energy into the articles that describe these things but i'd love to do that um and so i'm doing a little preview of it now but yes the the essence is this is what is happening in the customer portal as well. This, this sync calculation on all of your listings. Um, and so that is what's happening. Nick, you had asked, when do this, you know, it's, there's a tricky question. When do this, the channels update with the new stock level after somebody makes a customer portal purchase? And the, the real answer I said, right when that order is placed, but realistically, when that order is placed and those two quantities are being subtracted uh, in the outstanding count, it's the next time that wholesale talks to eBay in this instance, which is every 10 to 20 minutes, it's talking to eBay and updating those quantities. So the next time wholesale talks to eBay is when eBay, the listing on eBay for those items is going to get updated with the accurate, accurate quantities. Um, it's the second that the person purchases, makes the purchase on the, the wholesale customer portal, that, that order is going to come in. And then this, when you'd come and view this, this calculation, this calculation would get updated immediately, but it's going to be the next time that wholesale syncs with eBay or Swappa or Back Market or Sellbrite, whoever that 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 those products are going to be. Um, the, the, excuse me, the, the listings on that channel are going to be updated. And if you're syncing with Sellbrite, wholesale will talk to Sellbrite, and then it's whenever Sellbrite talks to your channels. So you know, I think you're right, Justin. The the sync picture can be very complicated, and um, for for bulk e-commerce sellers for or sorry for high volume e-commerce sellers we know these are these are tricky problems so we're trying to learn about them as fast as we can and uh, build tools that that address them 
part of that is building these direct integrations that talk directly because that's the, the strongest thing for, for wholesale to do. So uh, we got a question from Robert. Robert said, quick question that I'm not sure you can address during the webinar. Interesting. Uh, we can get on a one-on-one -on -one if, uh, if it's longer, Robert. So after creating custom fields to be populated with data from the phone check integration, those fields are not being filled after importing inventory from the phone check and viewing it in the product catalog section. Interesting, Robert. This, this is definitely a um, a one-on-one -on -one question um, that you can use our, our live chat for, or we can get on a call with you about. The I will say the fastest thing I can say here on the webinar is the most common issue that we've run into, and I think it's in the known issues section of our custom inventory fields, is that um, the names of the custom inventory fields you have matters really significantly. So let me pop over to my settings really quick. And if anybody's got any other questions too, let's let's make this a free for all. It's kind of fun to do that. Um, Let's pop over to inventory settings and custom fields. Uh, so just so you're on the lookout, Robert, if you're setting up your account and you've got your custom inventory field set up, we've noticed, uh, Mike and I, as we're supporting customers, that capital letters, having multiple capital letters in a custom uh, inventory field is problematic. Having spaces in them can be problematic. So we were testing for here, PO invoice uh, wasn't uploading for, for one reason or another. We had to we had to capitalize PO, the invoice section of PO invoice. Um, and so if and so it's spaces, capital letters, and the word ID, because we've got a database with uh, database tables and IDs, the, the word ID uh, is, is a struggle um, to put in these and, and sometimes will cause them not to work. So if you're seeing that you're, and for anybody else on the call, if you've, if you've tried to create custom inventory fields, um, and they have not imported when you've tried to import stuff from phone check or uploaded a spreadsheet, I would play with the name of the custom field. And the simplest name that you can have is a word that doesn't contain ID in it um, and is uh, all lowercase. So if, if you're struggling and you're at your wit's end, just make, for, for testing purposes, just make the custom field name one word, all lowercase, and I bet that that will solve the problem. Um, but Robert, if that doesn't solve the problem for you, schedule a call with us. We'll, uh, and Mike, if you don't mind in the chat, uh, if you're still on the call, share that link to, uh, to schedule a, a call with us and we'll get people set up. Um, yeah. Thanks for great, uh, great interaction today, everybody. It's, uh, it's nice to have uh, an interactive webinar. Um, if there are any questions, toss them in the chat. Otherwise, I'll just pop back and, and chat up about our, our trial process. Again, anyone on the on the call that has not started a trial, we'll give you some extra time on a trial if you need it. Um, we try and be as involved as we can. Um, Mike and I are really passionate about uh, this industry and and helping folks uh, get their accounts set up properly. So, yeah, thanks uh, and thanks to all of our existing customers on the call as well. We really appreciate you. So, it's been a, a fun four and a half four and a half years of building wholesale. Yeah, thanks, Justin. Thank you too. All right, everyone. Well, happy Friday. I'm going to let you all off to uh, no, no more questions, it seems. So I'll let you get off to your weekends uh, or the rest of the, the rest of the end of your week. Um, and we'll catch you in the next one. We've got uh, some new and exciting features in the in the pipeline. So uh, keep on lookout. You'll certainly be getting emails from me and uh, we'll be talking to you in the next one of these. Take care, everybody.